Now we are going to talk about synovial joints. The synovial joints are going to be our movable joints, moving, right? The synovial joints move. allow you to dance. I got to move it, move it. Um, so the synovial joints are moving, they are cracking, they are popping, and they have synovial fluid in them to help with friction. So we're going to look at six different types of the synovial joints and then the specific six uh, or different types of joints you guys need to know, starting with planar. Now the planar joints are going to be the least movable of the six categories. They are going to be where kind of flat surfaces rub up against each other. So we're going to start with the intervertebral joints at the articular facets. So we're looking at the spinal cord and then Corrine has two of the uh, thoracic vertebrae that are touching one another at their articular facets. So we have a superior articular facet at the top and then an inferior articular facet at the bottom. Where facets they, are flat. Facets are flat and where they hit is where we find our planar joint, which will allow for a little bit of sliding movement on that joint. Now we get to go look at the front of Norman. Spin, Norman, spin! Do dancing. I think he was in ballet one time. Yeah, well, he doesn't seem very cooperative. No, he, he's not. <laughs> All right, so we are now looking at the sternocostal joint. So remember, the sternum is attached to the rib by cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage. The joint where that cartilage hits the sternum is synovial. There's fluid between the two. Again, it's just called the sternocostal joint. And this is specific to joints two through seven. One is not included. Now we look at the knee, right? We're going right. down, 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 Norman, to the knee. Um, so at the knee, we have a two joints here, technically. Um, we've got the patella, where it hits the patellar surface of the femur, um, which is just the patellar femoral joint, right? That's going to be plantar. Now it is going to slide up and down against the knee, um, along the knee, while the hinge joint behind it actually works. So now let's talk a little bit about hinge joints. Hinge joints are going to, to hinge, right, like a door. Yeah, up and down, back and forth. So the first example is the knee joint, where the condyles of the femur are going to articulate with the surfaces on the tibia. And that will allow us for a flexion and an extension. So flexion going back, extension coming forward. Thank you, Corrine, for doing a dance. That's right. The same we can actually do for the next type of hinge joint, which is at the ankle. So at the ankle, we have the spot where the tibia is touching the talus. So the tibia and the fibula is also there helping to support. Norman is not very flexible. No, he, and maybe he did too much ballet. He's lost all, he's got arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> so the tibia touching the talus is gonna allow for you to point your toes and come back, which is what we call um, dorsiflexion up and then plantar flexion down. So dorsi and plantar, dorsi up, Plantar down, point and flex, point and flex, and dancing Corrine. Right? So flexion extension with a lot of these hinge joints. Now the other two examples of hinge joints, we have to come back up, crawling up off the floor, right, to the elbow um, and the wrist, basically, or yep. the hand, I guess, is our example. Right. So the elbow is going to be where the ulna, like that little ulna, is going to articulate with the humerus and coming up and down. Again, flexion and extension. Same we will also see with the fourth kind of joint here with the interphalangeal joints, which is at the fingers. So each phalange, the distal, the middle, and the proximal will all fold. Those are also hinge joints. Norman, again, is not very bendy, <gasps> so I'm showing Go, Good right. job, Corrine. Way to pick up for Norman's, you know, slacking today. Know, he is really He's funny. not cooperative. I'm going to fire him for the next few. Sure, we're going to have to pull Herman back. We might have right? to. Right? Norman is not, not our best specimen. All right, now we all are going to stay here and we're going to look at the radial ulna joints. So um, as we talked about in the first video, the radius and the ulna are attached with the band, which is the rubber band that's still there. All right, that band is going to be fibers. But at each end of the radius and the ulna, there are two joints that articulate as synovial <laughs> joints. This allows for a pivot, a spin, basically. So we have a radius and ulnar interaction to supinate and pronate Stop. and then pronate backwards mm -hmm. uh -huh. so then um we have two there is the distal which is the one we're seeing right here the distal radial ulnar joint where the ulna is going to touch the ulnar notch of the radius and then up at the elbow 
we have kind of the opposite, right? This is your proximal joint where the radius is going to touch the radial notch of the ulna. Nothing like confusion there, right? Okay, so then the last one we're going to look at in this video is actually looking back at the head. So Corrine has our cute little radial axle um, joint here, which is horribly focused. I'm sorry. Atlantoaxial. Mm -hmm. So the atlas and the axis are going to interact with each other. So remember, this is C1 and C2 of one. the vertebrae. Two. C1 is our atlas, atlas and C2 is our axis. So you can see the axis is going to have the dens that sticks up, which you can see right there. And that's going to articulate with the atlas and allow us to say no. No. No more studying anatomy. Too much to remember. 